Hi everyone, so here we're going to see how to use the Waffle script in Grasshopper. So since many of you had some problems using it, I actually worked on it a little and I've uh, changed time parameters so that it can work a little better. So I made a new version of it and you can download it from um, the iCourse website on our page. So if you go on the third uh, chapter, so um, this is the script you've downloaded, but the new version I've made is this new file called t 3 Waffle script uh, x10. So this might work a little better. So once you, you've downloaded, uh, you, can, um, uh, you can open that instead of the old one. So now I'm just going to go through the whole process again so we can see how to do it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open a file. Um, and you you might all get to the point where you have um, a poly surface like this one and uh, you you want to check first uh, before running the script that your poly surface is a closed poly surface that means that it doesn't have any gap so to check that it's it's very easy you just need to uh, select it and go on the properties panels on details and you can see that here it says that it's a closed solid polysurface. That's fine because the script actually needs a closed uh, polysurface to work. If, there, if there's a polysurface that has a gap it, and it's not closed, then uh, the script might have some problems. So you need to check that first. To check if where there are gaps, you can use this command here, show edges. So basically, this command helps you finding uh, naked edges if there are any. As you can see here, there's no naked edges. But if there would be one, then you would see some kind of um, edge like this color. But um, now here I'm just showing all the edges. But as you can see, there are no naked edges. So that, that's good. <clears throat> so the other thing you need to do is also uh, placing the model around this area. That is the area of the origin. And that's, um, that's going to be helpful afterward when we're going to we're going to run the Grasshopper script. So now we can open Grasshopper and open the new script we, don't, we have downloaded. So um, I, what, I, what I've done in this script is that I've actually increased all the parameter by 10 because I've noticed that when it was a little small it was in, in, it was creating some mistakes, so I, I've increased all the parameters by ten. Um, so, as you can see, when you open the script, um, you you are, have all these um, red um, sections. That is actually where the sections are going to be, and these these uh, sections are controlled by these parameters. So, as you can see here, you can control the number of sections in the x uh, x axis and um, the number of section on the y um, axis and here you can control the spacing so since I've, I've increased all the parameters by 10 when, when you see 100 it means that um, this, uh, the spacing between one section and the other is going to be by one centimeter and in fact as you can see the material thickness here is 10 and we suppose that that's actually representing one millimeter so if you want to change uh, the spacing, you can just uh, use this slider. And as you can see, you can increase or decrease the spacing between sections. And you actually see the sections moving in the window in Rhino. But for, for, for at this point, we just want to leave it at uh, 100. That's in fact the maximum um, size of the model we want to have. So it is just going to be 20 by 20 by 15 maximum in height. So now what we want to do is just uh, scale our model here in a way that it will fit around this uh, virtual area. So we can just scale it. You can just do it visually uh, so that it won't exceed those axes. Okay. So once we have placed that into this uh, virtual area of 20 by 20, 
we can we can start running the script. So to do that, you just need to select the input, the BREP input. And so the, the, the input is just actually the poly surface. So to select that, you need to right click on it and then set one BREP. So you, you just have to click on the poly surface and then once these uh, once you have selected it, you just need to press enable in order to enable the script to work. So this might take some seconds. Okay, so as you can see, the result it's now shown in the Rhino window, and that's, the result might look like this. So you, you you're gonna have all the three D sections of your model, and then the two D uh, sections that are actually the pieces that are going to be laser cutted. So now um, you need to go back on Grasshopper. And as you can see, all, the, all these um, parts that have been created in, um, in Grasshopper are enlightened in red. Then, that means that they're not actually part of the model in Rhino. In fact, if you close Grasshopper, you're not going to see anything because that actually just a preview that Grasshopper give you, gives you um, in order to see how the model is going to be. But uh, to have them as actually uh, real geometries in Rhino, you need to bake them. And to bake the pieces, it's, it's very easy. So you need to go at the very end of the script in this area. And as you can see here, there are um, these um, boxes that actually represent um, the pieces for the laser cut. So in order to have them uh, in Rhino, you need to bake them, that it's this command here. But we might want to create some new layer first, where we're going to um, place uh, the pieces that are, gonna, uh, are going to be cut. So we're going to make a cut layer, then an engraved layer. And this is going to be used for uh, the text that is going to be engraved on your pieces. And then at the end, we can make a 3D layer where we're going to place the 3D sections of our model. So uh, another thing that you can see here is that you might have all these little pieces here. And that's, that's normal in the sense that uh, they might be created because, um, as you can see here, As you can see here, um, the, the, depending on where you position your model, there could be some little parts that would just be resulting into little triangles. And you can avoid them by moving your model in a way that is not touched by the section in, at the very end, so avoiding these. But if these happen, you're not gonna, you're not gonna even build it in the model. You're just gonna, they might not be even cutted. So, but if you want to avoid them, you need to move the model away from the very end of the of the axis, or you need also to um, increase or decrease the spacing. But uh, once the, the script is loaded, you might not want to change this parameter because it's going to be run the script again, and it might take some seconds. So if you want to change any of this parameter, you might want to disable the B wrap first, change the parameter and then enable the, the BREP again. Okay, so let's let's go back, back to the bake um, parts. So once we are satisfied with our with our structure, um, we need to we need to save these pieces into Rhino. So we need to go back to, to these parts and these actually bake the laser parts. So you need to right click on it and then click bake. You can choose the layer do it here too. So these represent the curves. These actually represent, as you can see, the tag. Uh, they are going to be engraved on your model. So you, you want to save them on, on another layer because when we're gonna, when they're going to be laser cutted, um, they will need to stay onto another layer because the laser will recognize these lines are something as uh, it has to be cutted, and and these actually these text as something that it just has to be engraved. So you want to save all the tags on the engraved uh, um, layer, and then in the end, 
um, you can uh, you can also um, bake the solids that compose the model. So you, you can use um, the three D solids to make some images that you, you're going to use for the PDF file. Okay, so now now I've baked everything I needed, so I can just um, close Grasshopper, and as you can see, I have all all the pieces I needed in Rhino too. So now what I can do maybe it's uh, just changing the color of the layers so that I can recognize them a little better. I'm just gonna leave that. So now. Um, what you can do is also um, when you have these kind of pieces that you're not even gonna be uh, building because they're too small, you can um, you can just delete them. Then a work you need to do manually is actually move the tags inside the part because sometimes they, they they're gonna be here on the edge or sometimes they're just gonna be far out. So you need to take them and move them inside the actual actual part. So um, another important thing is that since we scaled uh, we scaled the model and the script by ten, as you can see here, if I measure um, this notch here, it's going to be measuring ten units. So and that's wrong because we need to have them uh, as large as one millimeter, so as one unit. So you need to select them all and then scale them. by 0 0.1 okay so as you can see now they're definitely smaller and you can check if um, any of these notch is just one unit and that's that's correct so you all need to have um, all these uh, little notches as large as one unit so once you have, you have, you have done that you can you can continue and then export this um, 2D part in a DWG file. And um, you can just select them and go to File, Export Selected, and then choose the DWG format. And then um, you can call it with um, the, the name, yeah, the surname of you and your uh, group mate. So I would just call it laser cut. But it's better if you, uh, if you name it with the name of your group. You can just use the default setting here. Okay, so now you're gonna have a DWG file, and you need to upload these on the iCourse page so that we can uh, start um, cutting them tomorrow. And the other thing you want to do is also um, trying to make some image of your model maybe in a rendered view, so you can choose some perspective, add some lights, or even add some, some people, but just make it simple. We just want to see uh, more or less the structure in a virtual uh, shape and then also in the physical shape once you're gonna build it. So I hope this, this will be helpful, so good work, bye-bye.